Live from Ramsey Solutions, you're joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you can get there. So excited to have you with us today. Here's what's coming up. Uh, we have got a fantastic new article from the Wall Street Journal it's going to change your mindset about how much negativity actually affects you. Uh, we're going to get to your questions uh, right here in the chat window. And so as you are watching the show and you want to submit your question, we're going to get to that right here on my laptop uh, coming up. And that's always a fun, interactive opportunity. And then uh, we're going to talk about getting qualified, stage two in the process. And then, of course, your calls. This is your opportunity. You're stuck, scared, confused. You have Aki right now. The number 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. All right. Uh, just saw this article the other day. This is fresh from the Wall Street Journal. For the new year, say no to negativity. Now, I'm going to read a lot because this is so well written. Uh, Co-authored by John Tierney and Roy Bomeister. Both great minds, Bullmeister known in the psychology community, very well respected. And I'm going to read a lot, so stay with me because this is very relevant to where you are uh, in the moment. Here we go. Uh, we could use a refresh in our approach to a new year. How about go on a low, bad diet? I love that. Not low, fat diet. You didn't hear me incorrectly. A low, bad diet. Listen to this. Our minds are skewed by a fundamental imbalance that is just now becoming clear to scientists. It's called the negativity effect, also known as negativity bias. And it's when bad events and emotions affect us more strongly than positive ones. Okay? Uh, so we're devastated by a word of criticism, but unmoved by praise. We'll see a hostile face in the crowd. And we'll miss all the friendly smiles. We focus so much on bad news, especially in a digital world, that it magnifies the negativity's power. Okay? So understand this. That negativity in general has a much more profound effect on us. Now, let's pause for a moment. Is that true in your life? <laughs> you know it is. You can hear a ton of positive things at the workplace or around friends and family. One negative is the one thing you remember. All right, moving forward. So we have to recognize this. Psychologists are now studying people's reactions around bad first impressions, and they're realizing that it has a greater impact than a good first impression. So more evidence here. So Bomeister, I mentioned at the top of the article, and his colleagues at Case Western University decided to identify several patterns that would help them develop an elaborate, complex, and nuanced theory about when bad is stronger versus when good is stronger, but they couldn't. They scoured everything. So studies show that bad health or bad parenting makes a much bigger difference than good health or good parenting. Wow. So our brain's negativity bias, where does it come from? The survival mechanism. So if you think about our, our ancestors, okay, and you think about they had to survive, and so it was always about identifying the negative so they could survive. That's what they're dealing with, okay? And so that helped them survive, and it could still be useful. Obviously, we want to identify the negative. But we don't want it to dominate our mindset like it does. Let's look at how it does. How does the negative affect us every day? Politicians and journalists, specifically, are tapping in to this primal emotion by hyping the threats from nature, technology, uh, foreign news, political opponents, uh, whatever will instantly trigger our brain's alarm circuits. So once psychologists identified this negativity effect, they realized it had been distorting their profession. So because negative events had stronger effects, then think about this, all of their practices, their journals, the books they write, we're focusing on how to deal with negativity. So post-traumatic stress disorder, to name one very well-known effect, took on huge influence in our society. But here's what we know, that post-traumatic growth is far more common. 
most people who undergo some type of, again, we're talking about low to mid-grade traumas, uh, ultimately feel that that experience makes them stronger and ultimately better. So now psychologists are beginning to compensate for all of the focus on negativity by studying the positive effects. Here's what we know. Older people are typically happier than younger. Why? Because they've learned how to go on low, bad diet. So here's a couple things real quick that the authors give us. Going to run through these real quick. Number one, focus on doing no harm. So the idea here is, is that if, if negative actions have a more powerful effect, then focus on not doing things that harm others in your relationships and in the business, in the workplace. Number two, focus on the rule of four. Studies have shown that negative things, events, or emotions have three times the impact of a positive one. So it takes four good things to overcome one bad thing. And then put the bad moments to use. Learn from the bad moments. And finally, when you have the good moments, relive them. Celebrate them. Talk to your friends and family about it. Really celebrate these things. When you do this, here's what's going to happen. You go on a no bad diet. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. All right. Let's get to your calls. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577 is the number. And we're going to start it off with Lisa, who's on the line in Utica, New York. Lisa, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. I'm so excited to talk with you. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can I help today? So I came out of a passive new age and uh, became a Christian five years ago. Since then, I've been um, I've been able to see the fruits of prophetic gifts and been able to pray for people, which is like my favorite thing ever. Um, but I'm calling because I've struggled my whole life to find a good fit in the working world, job hopped to no end, and I'm just so exhausted of that and hoping to get some some insight. Okay, so let's have some fun here. Let's take all of <laughs> all of your thinking and let's just kind of press pause on it. And let's answer okay. a fun question. If I could give you something to do tomorrow, work that you'd be very very excited about. Okay? And work that you were guaranteed to be really really good at. You wouldn't fail. Couldn't fail. You're going <laughs> to be successful. I guarantee it. And you wouldn't have to commit to that for the rest of your life. It's just this fun work adventure. What would you choose to do tomorrow? I would probably do some kind of traveling with a book and praying over people, singing over people, and just telling people about the love of the Father. All right, so let's get more specific. That's a good answer. Now, that's let's let's just say that that's 30,000 feet, right? We're cruising up uh, high above the clouds here. Let's get a little bit more focused. So it's going to be hard for you to make a pretty good living traveling around with a book, right? Praying over people. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so would a ministry position, am I hearing that a ministry position is what you would love to do? Yes. Okay. So my question is, same question, what would the ministry position be if I could give it to you tomorrow? Oh, I don't know. Sure you do. Take a shot at it. There's no <laughs> risk. Like, what would a you do? You're, yeah, you're familiar with the church world. You're familiar with nonprofit ministries. What would you be doing tomorrow based on what you love to do? You love to, to meet with people, pray over them, and intercessor is a, is a word that you could use as a role. What would you be doing? What would that role look like? Just say it. Forget about job title. What would you be doing all day, every day that you know is an actual position in a ministry? I honestly don't know. Ken, this is my problem. Yeah. I really don't know. Yeah, it's because you've not done enough diving into this. So let's dive into yeah. it a little bit more. What do you do okay. best? What have people always complimented you on? They, they just say, you're really good at this. Uh, what tasks or functions have always come easy uh, to you? What did you excel in throughout your life? Tell me. Um, creativity, like brainstorming, resourcefulness, creating something from nothing, like writing, writing written communications. Okay. Brainstorming resourcefulness. What does that resourcefulness mean? Be more specific. If somebody needs to find something out, find some piece of information, I can just figure out where to dig for that information and get the data and okay. apply it to whatever the problem is. Yeah, interesting. And so the brainstorming thing is also very interesting to me. What do you love to brainstorm? Let's move over to the passion side of things. We were just talking about talent, what you do best. Uh, let's, let's, talk, uh, let's talk passion for a moment. So what would you love to do all day, every day, if you were being creative and brainstorming and diving in, doing some research? What would that look like? Yeah, I really love to encourage people to do their dreams and 
uh, help them figure out how that's possible. Okay. So it sounds like you want to be a part of the Ken Coleman show is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Are you hiring? Uh, not right now. No, but I like your spunk. Okay. So now that you, you've, you, now that you've kind of dived in here a little bit to you and, and what makes you tick, uh, you, you want to use brainstorming creativity. You also said writing. So I'm guessing you've got strong verbal skills. Is that correct? That's a fair assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Fair assessment. So how would you use those tools? That's what talents and strengths are. Those are tools. How would you use those to do work in ministry that you saw? Hey, my, my work, my talents are being used to bring people closer to God. Do you see that? Yeah. You're still stuck, but you're not stuck. You think you're stuck because you can't come up with a little job title. But what would you be doing all day, every day, based on what you just told me? You would want to be in a situation where maybe, let me give you a suggestion, maybe you're working for a church where you're involved in the programming. Okay. Yeah. The programming elements, right? So we're planning services or, you know, cause that's a creative thing and it's a brainstorming thing. And then we're, you know, we've got to go dig and we got to go find out maybe you're in an administrative role. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. You have to sit there and begin to say, okay, these are all the things I do well, uh, and, and these are the things that I really enjoy doing, and how can I marry the two and be working in ministry? And, oh, by the way, maybe I'm traveling, so maybe this is a missions uh, opportunity for you. Maybe it's yeah. missions. Do you see where this is going? Mm-hmm. So, is mm-hmm. it th- so, so what, what do you need to do next? I need to find out what ministry roles there are and how I can yes! plunk my gifts into, yes, <laughs> into yes, their ministry. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> so so yeah. what, we, what we just did was a little sweet spot exercise. We looked at what you do best and what you love to do most. You need to continue that exercise on your own because I got you started. And you yes, look over you. there and you just say, okay, these are the things I do best. <laughs> God put those in me to use, yes or no? Yes. All right. So then look at all the different positions and roles within ministry, because I think ministry is where you want to be. I think that's what you're super clear about. And and so then you look at that, and that's stage one, getting clear. Stage two of the climb into work that matters, work that is meaningful to you, is getting qualified. And so that's what I need to learn and do. I'm going to teach a little bit about that later in the show. Uh, So so hang in there. I'm going to break that down. But that would be what's next for you. So. Uh, appreciate the call, Lisa. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. Somebody's watching right now. You need to call. Uh, today's your day, uh, so we'd love to hear from you. Up next is Tyler, who's on the line in Raleigh, North Carolina. Tyler, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Great to talk to you. What an honor. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, I'm happy to. The honor is all mine. What's going on today? Well, let, let me s- summarize my situation as quickly as I can, and then I'm going to ask for your discernment about a uh, possible co- uh, conversation I'm going to have to have with my supervisor. So, okay. Very short. Uh, for the last 25 years, I've worked in the international shipping business. I've done e- everything you can imagine, sales, administration, management, everything. Mm-hmm. And for the past two years, I've been in a very, very specific and defined sales role. Uh, and I specific as uh, the role that I was doing was was selling a service that not a lot of our competition uh, offered. So it was a very very narrow and focused sales role. Well, about uh, about March of last year, my company was very unexpectedly uh, the subject of a hostile takeover from one of our uh, one of our larger competitors. And so needless to say, um, because I was in such a specific role and in a role that didn't exist in the company that, uh, that bought us, I was, I've been actively on a job search just in case. So fast forward to Thanksgiving timeframe. Um, I, I, by, by, uh, by Thanksgiving, I still didn't really know whether or not I was going to have a job. I had gotten some signals that maybe the acquiring company was going to keep me. Um, but during that time, I reconnected with a, uh, another company that had been trying to recruit me for the last three or four years, and it just had never worked out for, for one reason or another. Either the, the role wasn't right for me or it was a big step in pay or you know, the a role that I wanted with them, just the, the geography didn't work out. So. Okay. 
So, so be that as it may, I, um, I finally learned um, j- just after Thanksgiving that I would be retained um, in, a, uh, in, in a role with, with the, uh, the acquiring company. And I, it was, it, it, I got the sense that they were offering me a job somewhat, I don't want to say out of desperation or not really, but they, they, I would, they, they, not, they did not feel wanted for sure. It was like, well, you know, uh, it just. Tyler, a lot Tyler, of Tyler, you're yeah. giving me so much context. And uh, it's 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 not necessary. There's a need. There's a want. There's a question, a burning question you have. Hit me with it. What is it? Okay, so here here it is. So I have I have within the last two days been offered a job by a company that uh, you know by another company, and as I mentioned, I've already taken a job with uh, the company that acquired us. Right. So my question is, I, I need to approach my current supervisor with a list of questions uh, because I want to get some clarity to make sure I'm not projecting something onto this role that it's not. And so my question is, so I'm looking for some guidance on maybe. All right, hold on, hold on, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, buddy, 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 listen, this is, li- listen, you just got offered another job after taking a job with a company that acquired you. That's the, that's where we stand right now, correct? Yeah, correct. Do you want the new job or not? Um, I want the company, but the, but the, the role isn't exactly what I want, but I want the company. Okay. So I would have to, in, in order to get to the role, I would have to make a three or four year investment in a new company and, and, and work my way to the role. Right. But isn't that what you want? That's the path. Everybody's got to put some time in. So if we take this new offer and we bust it for three to four years, we do a great job. You know your role, you accept your role, you maximize your role. That's how you move up those three things. You do those consistently. That's how you move up and you get that position. I don't understand why we're still talking. I think you take the new job. Why in the world? Why do I give you a bunch of questions to ask your current leader in a new company, a situation, you know, in a new role, in an acquired situation, which is all new, and I haven't heard anything positive about your current situation that you want to stay there. Am I right or am I wrong? Um, well, there's one one piece of the puzzle. The, the role that they've offered me is actually the the, the role that I would want in the new company. So I, I have I have the role that I want, just not in the right company. I understand, but that's not what we're talking about. The, the, the current company that you're in right now. You've got the role you want, but you don't like the company, right? Basically. Not basically. That's what you're saying. (laughs) Do do you you foresee any blowback because I did accept the job? I've been doing it for a couple weeks. No, no. You got a better opportunity. You got a better opportunity. You were just acquired. You didn't sign up for this company. Yes or no? Correct. That you got acquired. Yes or no? Correct. Yeah. How many people are leaving as a result of that acquisition? A uh, fair number. Yeah. So why all of a sudden are you so worried about that? Because you've got an offer sitting right now in your lap from another company that you really like. Yes or no? True. Yes. And it has a path to the position that you really, really want. You're just going to have to pay your dues. Correct? Correct then this phone call is over. Take it and don't look back. There's nothing flighty, nothing flaky about you taking this position. Folks, that's what Tyler's worried about right there. All that talk, and I appreciate that, all that talk uh, about what should I do and how do I talk is all about him being worried about uh, that little spot on his resume. I just took this position, and three weeks later, I'm hopping. I'm leaving the nest. Well, there's nothing flaky about that because he's got an offer right now that gives him a better future. It's the desired future that he wants. So don't worry about it. You don't owe anything to this new company. It's a transition. That's easily explained. Tyler and the rest of you who have a situation like this with, hey, I was acquired. I had nothing to do with it. And wasn't a good fit for me. I was more excited about another company. You guys came to me. This is awesome. I love your company way more than this new company that acquired me. That's why I'm taking it. So don't overthink this stuff. It's, 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 it's not necessary. You're not going to look bad on your resume. In fact, you're going to look very attractive because you were offered something from an outside company. Take that, stick that feather in your hat, get your chin up and enjoy it. All right. We'll get more calls uh, a little bit later in the program. The number 844-747-747-844-747-2577. 
seven seven. But right now, uh, we're going to go to the chat window. This is fun. I love this. Uh, and so right here, you're watching, and uh, you can fire those questions away. And we're going to get to. Uh, uh, we'll try to get to a couple of these uh, right now. Uh, let's go to Todd. He says, "I've just turned 35, and I've been job hopping my whole life through handyman and repair jobs. I feel like I'm constantly switching jobs, and I've hurt my income since employers pay more the longer you stay. Eh, not necessarily. Should I buckle down and commit to one employer to make more money, or continue following where new opportunities lead? Well." Okay, this is this is one of those situations where uh, uh, you're going to have to look at the big picture. Well, what is it that you really want to be doing? What is it that, you know, if we look 10 years down the road and we say, all right, this is the dream situation for you, Todd, then we want to take opportunities that lead to that. And I'm fine with you job hopping. There's nothing inherently wrong with job hopping unless job hopping means every three weeks you're quitting and starting somewhere else that that's what i would call something negative but if you're moving maybe once or twice a year uh, but it's always moving forward moving upward if you will uh, then i'm completely fine with that and so i think that's the answer uh, let's go to leroy he says um, what if there's nothing you enjoy doing for work and just want to figure out what is the lesser of evils but pays well <laughs> Well, Leroy, you know, listen, I appreciate the honesty here, but I'm going to tell you that there is work that you enjoy. I'm just telling you, you are a human being best that I can tell. And uh, so if you're a human being, uh, you were created on purpose. You aren't the exception. And that means there is something that you enjoy doing and uh, you've just yet to identify it. And it could be because of your mindset and how you look at work. It could be because... You've actually never done the introspective work of saying, what if I always just kind of been good at? I mean, from the time I can remember, go way back, by the way, and ask yourself, you know, what subjects in school came easy to me? What tasks and things like that that I may have seen other uh, youngsters struggle with, but I didn't struggle with it? And what have people complimented me on? What what work um, have I been given? Because, hey, you can do this. You know, ask those simple questions right there. And by the way, don't put it all on you. Maybe you're in a down season of life, and the only way you see Leroy is through a negative filter. Talk to some people who know you really well and will be truth tellers. You know, they're not just going to say things that make you feel good, but there are people who know you and know you well, and you know who they are. And so if you need that push, that extra set of eyes, if you will, uh, to begin to see yourself differently, then that's what you need to do. And then once you figure out what that work is that you would really enjoy doing, uh, then we begin to look for that. And while we're looking for that, we also go, hey, uh, do I have the talent to pull this off? Do I have the raw talent to, to actually do this? Uh, does this match up something I enjoy and I'm actually good at it? And uh, so when you look at the big picture of what you've done well and what you've always enjoyed, uh, you're going to find a connection because here's what we know about the human mind is that we don't like to do things we suck at. We just don't, right? And uh, so, hey, let's look for the things that we enjoy and look for the things we've always done well. And you're going to see that some of those things are actually, uh, they, they, they literally intersect. And that's why I teach the sweet spot. You use what you do best, Leroy, to do what you love to do most. All right. Uh, this is a fun interactive thing here. Now, here's my advice on this chat window. We're going to look at this. We're going to go live uh, with these things. But make sure your questions are short, sweet, and to the point, let's go to one more. Candace says, how do I negotiate between two job opportunities? Should I tell job number two about the offer from job number one while expressing my hope to be hired at job number two? Okay, because that's the key part of the question. So I don't have any problem with you negotiating, although I think that's the wrong word. I like the word leverage, and leverage can be a good thing. Leverage does not have to be nasty or ugly. But let's focus on the fact that there's always going to be a favorite. And you've acknowledged in this question that job number two is your favorite. So what I want you to do is, is to be thinking, okay, uh, if job number two is my favorite, uh, what would I tell them about job number one? And I would be thinking about that and just saying, hey, listen, uh, I'm looking at both of these things. I've got two offers at the same time. Um, and because of the other job offer, they offered this. I'm just curious, is that 
congruent? Is that is that something that uh, uh, is possible over here? But I would not get into all this trying to compare and make number two feel like all of a sudden their job offer isn't as good. You want them to know that they're the leader or else it's going to feel manipulative and that's not good. And that's when whew, number two goes away and you're stuck with number one. So I would just take the positives out of number one say, hey, I've got two offers right now. I'm leaning towards you guys. I really want this. I think it's the better play. But I th- th- did bring up a couple things I'd like to ask. Other than that, you know, I, I would not get into what we would call traditional negotiation. Hey, I've been offered this amount of money from job number one. Are you willing to match that? I'd be careful with that. Uh, real careful how you say that. Um, and what I prefer is, is for you to say something like, hey, I got another job opportunity. Um, they're offering a little bit more, uh, which is in my range because I gave them a range of what I need to make. And they're just a little bit higher specifically. This is it. But I want to be with you all. Uh, is there any way we could get up there? I, I like that approach better. And then that's what I would do. All right. So keep the questions coming. You never know when I'll jump into the chat room. We love it. We love it. We love it. Thank you for watching and just keep firing those questions away. And and uh, also want to point out two things. You can engage with us on all of our social platforms at Ken Coleman on Instagram, uh, at Ken Coleman on Twitter and the Ken Coleman show on Facebook. The email of the show is ask at KenColeman.com. So all of those uh platforms and then the email are ways for you to submit questions so feel free to do that thank you so much uh for the chat all right i want to teach for just a few moments on stage two of the journey stage two of how do i get from where i am now to being in the dream job and giving myself away by doing work that matters So we talked about stage one yesterday, which is get clear. I've got to get clear. That's the sweet spot process um, that I walked Leroy through just very, very briefly. Um, But stage two is get qualified. So once I'm clear, so what do I do next? Once I know my sweet spot, I've identified what I do best, what I love to do most, where they intersect. In other words, how can I use what I do best? to do what I love to do most. Now we're looking for actual jobs, careers in that sweet spot. And that's really good news. There are multiple. So once we're clear, now it's about getting qualified. That's stage two, getting qualified. So what are the action items? What are the things I need to be doing in stage two, getting qualified? Well, the answer to that is, what do I need to learn and do? This is the first question you got to get an answer to. What do I need to learn So this is education-based. By the way, it does not have to be um, a college situation. It does not have to be college at all. Uh, Could be online certifications. uh, Could be community college. It doesn't have to be four-year degree, which usually for a lot of people seems to be insurmountable because of the cost. Uh, So we got to learn something and then do something with the knowledge. So what do I need to learn and do to actually be qualified. And then the second question is, how much does that cost? How much does it cost? Okay. And then how long is that going to take based on my financial reality? So you've got a budget. You should have a budget. You know your cost of living expenses. So once you've gone through, this is what I need to learn and do. This gets me the ticket to get into the dance. All right. How much is that going to cost? So we've got several figures. You ought to have multiple different options. So you have multiple price points. And then third, based on my financial reality, if I can only pay this much a month, how long is it going to take me? Or how long am I going to have to save to then be able to cash flow my way through this? So that becomes the plan. The answers to all those questions, what do I need to learn and do? How much does it cost? How long is it going to take? That's the plan. And it's not so overwhelming when you break it down that way. And so once you've got the answers, what's the fourth thing you need to do? Get started. Just do it. You got to get after it. And you begin the process of getting qualified. And we'll talk about stage three of tomorrow's show, and that is getting connected, which, by the way, you can do while you're getting qualified. So stage two is get qualified. Those are the basic three questions. And then the fourth item, get started. So that's how that works. 844 747 2577 is the number, 844-747-2577. Back to the phones we go. AJ's on the line in Fallon, Nevada. AJ, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, I appreciate you taking my call, Ken. Sure. How can I help? 
So I was recently let go of a job. I got fired last Friday, and I've listened to you a little bit, and I'm trying to get into, you know, what is my sweet spot, what I'm good at, and clarity. Uh, and I'm just drawing some blanks because okay. I, I could go get another sales job. I mean, they're, I mean, I sure, but I don't want to do that. All right, right. Where are the biggest <laughs> blanks? Are they on the talent side of things? What you do best? Uh, not really. I am um, people, people. I asked my buddy this morning at coffee. Hey, what do you think I do best? He said, you're good people. That's what you do. I was like, that's okay. what I've always thought. All right. So okay. where are the blanks on the passion side? What you love to do most? That and how to make money out of it. Um, like my biggest, like when you talk about clarity, like the one thing I want to do for sure, like no doubt in my mind, I want to make sure I'm a good dad, you know? Okay. With, well, hold on. That's great. But see, I want to get you, I want to get you focused right now because I think okay. you're actually clearer than you think. Um, because you revealed your big hang up, you're getting stuck after you've identified some things you'd want to do or the thing you want to do. And you're going, I just don't know if I can make enough money as quick as I need to make enough money. Or can I ever make enough money? I think that's what you're hung up on. Am I right or wrong? Uh, I want purpose and it's not really just about money, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yes. Well, I mean, I'm trying to get you to tell me what's really going on because calling me to say you really want to be a good dad. That's awesome. You can be a really good dad. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing on the show. So you called the day because you're saying, hey, Ken, I'm, I'm hung up. I'm drawing blanks. What are you drawing blanks on? Tell me what it is you'd love to do tomorrow if I guaranteed you that you would be successful, that you could not fail, and you wouldn't have to commit to 30 years of it. It's just a fun work adventure. What would you do tomorrow? Go. Say it. Well, right now, right now I'm coaching, and I like that. I like coaching. Coaching um, what? Basketball. Coaching who? You're just coaching different. basketball for who? Uh, right now, the freshman uh, girls in the local high school. Okay, great. So again, where are you drawing blanks? You started the call by saying, Ken, I'm drawing blanks. I want to know where you're drawing blanks so that I can help you. Like when you talk about a purpose statement? Yeah. That that in what I do, that's kind of where I'm drawing a blank. Like, like I said, I get past that. I want to be a good dad. And how, but other than that, like work related, I can go sell big equipment. No, tomorrow, no, 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 no. Don't go that direction. You know. Okay, okay. All right. So here's the thing. If you want to get a purpose statement, it's very simple. You write a sentence that looks like this, and you keep rewriting it until it gets clear. And it goes like this. I'm going to use what I do best, and then go blank, 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 and blank. So what do you do best? You're great with people, right? Correct. So you're a great connector. Are you a good communicator? Yes. Oh, good. We got two right there. I'm a connector and a good communicator. And so you could fill in the blank. What would you say is the third biggest strength that you have and talent, natural thing that you do well? I'm the idea guy, like 30,000 feet out. Okay, great. So you're not a vision. The not, yeah, yeah, not the details, Excel spreadsheet guy. I'm not that no. guy. You're a vision caster. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you would write a sentence like this. I'm going to use what I do best, casting vision, ideating, whatever you want to say there. Okay. Connecting with others and communicating with others to do blank. Is it coach others? Is it coaching? Mm, I don't know. Mm. What do you love most about coaching? Again, you, you, when I say, what would you do tomorrow? What would you do tomorrow? If I gave it to you, what would you do? And your answer was, well, I'm coaching right now. So it leads me to believe you really love the idea of a coach. doesn't mean it's coaching girls basketball. It could be coaching others in a variety of ways. But do you love the idea of being a coach? Yes. Okay. Because a coach can coach in a lot of places. Yes or no? Correct. Right. So here's your homework assignment that's going to give you breakthrough. You ready? You have to answer these yep. questions. Who do I most want to coach? And what do I okay. want to coach them to do better? How about that? Now that, my friend, you may not be able to answer today. But it's who do I most want to coach? How do I want to coach them if I want to add a third one? But really, it's what do I want to coach them to do better? And when we answer those questions, you're going to have breakthrough. You're going to have breakthrough. Why? Because, folks, you can hear the doubt in AJ's voice. He's overcome with doubt right now. And we don't have time to break down why he's doubting himself. But he gave us the clues. When I ask that fun question that I ask of everybody, which is, if I could give it to you tomorrow, risk-free, you knew you were going to be great at it, it would make the money you need to make, and you wouldn't have to commit for the rest of your life. It's just, we we get to go have fun at work. Okay. 
when I ask that question, it, it has an unbelievable effect on folks. You know, they can just get really, really clear. And what did he say? He said, he didn't tell me what it is tomorrow. He went, well, you know, Ken, I'm coaching right now. That was his psychological answer. That was, that's it, coaching. And when I pushed him on it, it's coaching. Now, I'm not taking a shot at AJ, but let's be honest, folks. I don't think AJ wants to coach high school or varsity or ninth grade girls basketball the rest of his life. So he's gotten confused by that. Now, that's where he's coaching now. That doesn't mean that's where he needs to be coaching long term or that that is where he's going to coach long term. But what is a coach? So when you get this idea, just like AJ, you got this word coach, coaching, this act, break it down. So for AJ, for example purposes, I would have AJ describe what a coach does. AJ still on hold. He needs to do this. AJ, describe a coach in your words. What does a coach do? Well, I think a coach, if I'm breaking it down, I think a coach instructs. I think a coach corrects. I think a coach critiques. I think a coach encourages. I think a coach equips. I think a coach encourages, right? You just keep going with this thing. And you go, wait a second. How would I then make those attributes of a coach a part of my daily work? Bing! And then it takes off. So here's the deal, folks. Don't make this thing any more complicated than it needs to be. Always retreat to clarity. Do the sweet spot exercise. What do I do best? What do I love to do most? How can I use what I do best to do what I love to do most? Oh, function. And then start looking for jobs and specific career paths that meet the standard of that unique role. The role that if you fill this role every day, you feel alive. That's the exercise of clarity. And that's stage one. Then the rest of it is, hey, it's just about action. Oh, I'm having too much fun. Too much fun, Joe, to quit. But hey, our time's almost up. But before I let you go, you matter. And you do have what it takes. Thanks so much for joining the conversation. Until next time, this is the Kid Coleman Show. Press on.